we have to self-isolate or have patients isolate so they prevent this exponential uh, growth of this uh, pandemic, we need to understand what are the symptoms, even without the test. So this is the issue uh, we can, and through the experience again of the Chinese, understand how do we recognize at least an infection. We need to know who's most vulnerable, are men more at risk, are children at risk. We need to ask the question, how long does the virus stay in your body? With regard to the last question, uh, disturbingly, there's now some reports that the virus can stay in your body for more than 30 days. So the first question then is to recognize either yourself, your friend, your family member that has an infection. And this is a report, again, from the Chinese experience of over um, thousands of cases. And here is Huan City, Hubei province and the country as a whole, where the Chinese rapidly got out the information that fever and cough, a dry cough, are some of the hallmarks of this infection. So anybody with a fever or dry cough should suspect uh, without a test even, and go to the extent of self-isolating and prevent then this contamination either amongst um, their family members, their friends, and their co-workers. What's of concern, however, is what percentage are severe or, or critical. I think what, uh, the good news is that 81% of symptoms are mild, but the concern is in patients with pre-existing conditions in the elderly, if you take again this case report now, 44,000 confirmed cases in mainland China, you see from their experience, patients who require hospitalization, they call that severe or critical in intensive care. If you add those together, that represents 18%. So if you then extrapolate what potentially could happen in our country and the number of patients that could get infected, and then say 18% of such patients will require hospitalization or intensive care units. That means we need sufficient beds. That means we need sufficient ICU personnel. That means we need to preserve at all costs the resources of the healthcare system. That is why I can emphasize so much that we need to flatten this curve and not generate this peak. Because if we generate this peak and 18% are severely or critically ill, there is no way our country, our system, has the capacity to manage that onslaught or what I call this tsunami. However, it's in our control. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the science of soap, simple things like the science of soap and the power of soap, this idea of washing your hands that you're told is a kindergarten days is not trivial as it relates to this disease. It's not trivial as it relates to not overwhelming the healthcare system. And it's not trivial in, in terms of exponentially spreading this disease.